These are the stories. My little girl, she's changing lives just by being herself. Of organizations and people making a difference. When you first tell someone about adaptive wheelchair boxing, it doesn't sound real. And empowering others. It saved my life. It saved my life. Across Canada. I scored my first goal in my first blind hockey game. In our community. You are going to step into this house and solve a crime. Oh, oh yeah. 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 On a cold November night in Halifax, Nova Scotia, there is movie magic being made. Who the heck are you? What are you doing here? It is in this Dalhousie University classroom that the framework for Autism Nova Scotia's video project is being put in place. My name is Yvonne Lelisher and I'm the program director at Autism Nova Scotia. The Autism Nova Scotia video project looks at creating a weekly program where teens and adults with autism are able to create a video that is purely coming from the space and the vision of autistic people. All of the steps, the storyboarding, the script development, the budgeting, all of that is created and coming from the, the vision of an autistic group of people. Scene 13, Detective Walker returns to see Caitlin lying on the floor. While program managers play a role in scheduling and guiding the project, the creative aspects of the film land solely in the hands of the participants. We're working on conflict resolution and group dynamics and social skills in those settings, but then we end up with a really awesome piece of film that shows some really cool ideas that the group came together and, and worked through. David Patterson has been a coordinator of video project in past years and has witnessed the growth of the program. Video Project provides a learning environment that's quite unique within Autism Nova Scotia because there is no top-down structure saying this is what we're doing and this is how we do it. Rather, Video Project is very bottom-up. All of the program designs are actually built by the members themselves. We provide the resources, we provide the guidance and the support, but the members drive the whole program. And because of that design, there's a lot of learning that happens quite organically. The social interactions are very real, they're very meaningful, and the members are very engaged in the learning that's happening within that environment because they're the ones that are creating it. Many artists were suspected to have autism. Michelangelo, Van Gogh. In year one, Video Project created a spoof on the Canadian classic Heritage Minutes with Autism Minutes, a look into a young woman's thoughts on what the world would look like without autism. Year two saw the group take on the superhero genre with Agents of Change, a film that explored the strengths and abilities of people on the autism spectrum. I've read every book of ninjas and your culture but I can't read body language. Year three of the video project brought the most ambitious film to date with Enigma. <laughs> this grand adventure saw the video project participants transported into a comic book. The film split between live action and hand-drawn animations created by the participants themselves. Once completed, the video projects have commenced with a Hollywood-like premiere, complete with red carpet. The event is always a highlight for the participants, with their friends and family in attendance, to see their film open on the big screen. This experience didn't come without the opening night butterflies, as longtime video project participant Gordy Wilson explained. I remember the first time I did it at Dell. I was nervous as hell looking at myself at the screen. But then when we did it again, it's like, yes, I got over it. It's like, yes, the jitters is gone. It's like, yes. <laughs> as the group starts on another year of video project, the concept of a murder mystery becomes the popular choice. The group begins the next stage of pre-production, jotting down ideas for the plot. East All in favor for the East Coast Country, Country Club. Club all of two. All right. opposed. All opposed? No. Nope. We're good. We're yeah. good. You get a name. So there you go, Sorry. Alistair, so you can design around that name. Scouting locations for scenes. The other thing is, is we'd have to somehow keep the wires out of the shot here. Mm -hmm. Blocking the action. Yeah, that would work. That would work. Yeah, that could be cool. 
and sourcing props. If we keep our colors with a red color, we can use some of the props from last year. Behind the scenes, a new face has taken a lead position with helping to steer the production. My name is Patricia, and I am the facilitator for Video Project. This year's Video Project, we're really excited to hire an autistic staff member to play a leadership role within the team. These group of participants have been doing this for several years together and separately in other programs within Autism Nova Scotia, and never before was there a peer, an autistic peer, in a position of power. I was like, how is this going to work? Will they see and understand that as autistic people we can be in these roles and these positions? You know, can I get their respect? Will they listen to me? You know, can they see me as an authority figure but still that we're equals, right? It was, I did a lot of navigating in my head and how I was going to do these things. Patricia's eye for detail and story structure is a valuable addition to the video projects as program manager Thomas Reynolds. Once the group kind of established a plan, Patricia took the script and kind of broke it down into specific scenes and then kind of taking the script and cleaning it up a little bit and, and making sure that everything flowed together. Patricia adds a whole other level to this, this initiative where Patricia is really playing a mentorship role to the members. We'll go back and like look at Law and Order or something. I'll, I'll, I'll check online. And I think that's so important to have, you know, an autistic person in a room of other autistics to model what that leadership looks like. Everybody's photography is so good if you just took one step back. She kind of really was able to understand the group in a way that someone maybe neurotypical who, who doesn't kind of have those same sensitivities was able to pick up on. So even in and just kind of that level, it was super helpful having Patricia there for the group cohesiveness and for everyone to feel comfortable. I think Patricia has forged a path and, and modeled what it looks like to take a leadership role. I think representation is so important, um, especially within this population and groups of folks who maybe don't always see themselves in leadership positions and in leadership roles. I think that sends a really important and really powerful message that, you know, this is something that's by us for us. And it provides a message that this is not for Autism Nova Scotia per se, it's not for the general community. This is this is for us. This is our thing. We are we are making it together as autistics and people with autism uh, to celebrate who we are. And I think that is is at the core uh, the value that Patricia brings um, in this leadership role. It wasn't about the end result. That was so important. This isn't about making a perfect movie at the end. This is a project where every part of it matters. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. Hello, my name is Nicholas Hasey and I was the director for Invitation to Death. I have been working in the field of film and animation for many years now and I got a call from Autism in Nova Scotia requesting that I should join their video project doing so in 2016. Nick, in his own right, was a leader for our group. He brings a calming presence and he's really adamant about everyone's voice being heard. The unique art form for making a film is the way that you tell a story. It uses your imagination. Nick's a wonderful human being. He's very caring. He's uh, very kind. You want to be able to set the mood for the scene. He actually really modeled for me in a lot of ways how to be a good facilitator because he was the he had taken on the director role for the group and they really looked up to him and he would bring his computer he'd open it up and he'd put on a random piece of old media even just as a student of film just comes with a wealth of knowledge of just kind of creativity and what what he wants to bring to each scene there were a few times where we would kind of break away from the the film we were working on and just start reading lines from other films and people just kind of jumping in and playing out scenes. For me as an eccentric millionaire, yeah. my inspiration comes from growing up watching older films like from the golden age of Hollywood. The golden age of Hollywood was when people had their own ideas. People were not afraid to show them. I'd like to see if we can bring back some sort of originality. What we're trying to show that anyone with autism can do 
anything out there. We have our own talents, our own ideas, and our own hearts. I'll tell you what is spooky as you put it. Ugh, the artwork is shabby, the decor leaves much to be desired, and everything seems a bit low brown and really poor taste. It seems rather hideous. Our location was basically in this one building right here. This used to be a Victorian house. There were some challenges. It's an almost confining space at times. It's not a place at all you would ever want to choose to shoot a film. <laughs> When you enter the main lobby area, it's a wooden floor with a long staircase, and there's very narrow hallways, so basically not too many people can go down all at once, they have to go in single file. There are a lot of steps, a lot of nooks, a lot of crannies. It was perfect because there was some old chandeliers, we had some pictures up on the wall. With necessary pieces in place, the group departs for the evening confident in their plan for the film, excited to begin production. Now, invitation to death, take one and two. Camel sight. The group starts their production by lighting scenes and blocking movement for cameras. Harry comes in, and he comes up right here, where we see the gun, a little bit closer as well as assembling props specific to the film's era. Since our story is like taking place in the 90s, we got some old tapes here, our films from over the years, an old banker's land. Oh, that's hot. <laughs> well, all of a sudden, the bad guy walks in, that is Craig. He's gonna say, your life debt is overdue and I've come to collect on your account. Won't get away with this. Oh. Very good. We're working on our next scene, which is taking place at a police station downtown in the city. And Gordy is going to get a mysterious call from someone telling him to go to this party. Detective Tom Walker here. So this will be sort of the shot. Oh, the good thing is, at least I'll have fun editing. The group spends the next three weekends shooting scenes in various locations, inside and outside of the Autism Nova Scotia office in Halifax. Yeah, you're doing the easy one over here. There's a phrase that I've come up with that, called autistic oxygen, which is just when autistic people get together, it's about not having to hold your breath so much that the air that you breathe in around you is, is more for you, that when you leave, that you feel more energized, that you know you know that the people are gonna get you. Craig, can you do a good scream? Ah! Do not ever do that again. <laughs> oh my god. Action. If you would have asked, went around the room and asked each person individually, this was not anybody's specific movie. So scene five. It was a collaboration of what everybody thought they could do when they brought together. It was the goal of making the movie, making sure that people are, were being heard and seen. And, and that we support each other in doing that is a beautiful thing. Love it, love it. To foster the idea of autistic oxygen, Autism Nova Scotia has implemented a visual strategy to keep respect front and center. With our groups when we're meeting together, there's a ton of different opinions being thrown around. We like to make sure it's a, like a good space for people to feel comfortable to share. We use a really unique process for this for video project, but also for our other programs that we have, where you string up a clothesline of string and then you have clothespins on the string and then you ask the group as a whole, what are things that are helpful for you to feel safe and welcome and wanting to return to this space? Things that we came up with, respecting other people's opinions, taking a break if you need to, listening to others, using respectful language. So then you would write that down on the construction paper and pin that to the clothespin on the line. So those ideas get written down, but we also discuss them when they're happening. So if someone shares an idea, we would say like, well, what does that look like for you? Can you share that with the rest of the group? We've seen someone say things like, 
oh, I noticed this happen and this impacted this other person. I think we need a community guideline about it. So it starts to evolve into not just being a community guideline to making yourself feel safe, but recognizing what safety and support looks like for them. Our community will return after the break. We now return to our community. First year participant Jacob Thibault joined the group with a background in video production. Hi, my name is Jacob and I am the cameraman for Autism Nova Scotia. I probably will never stop making videos. I will never quit, keep doing what I love to do. An accomplished YouTuber, Jacob saw the opportunity to grow his technical skills. I had my YouTube channel December 15, 2012. I do vlogs, challenges, tour reviews, anything you name it. I have 2,000 subscribers. I do a 3 to one before I start a video. That gets me prepared and ready. And um, I will do my phrase. Yes, I am back. I am back. I am back. I am back and I'm ready to attack. I've been doing some phone camera work and like some um, base camera work, like a camcorder, and now I'm onto a camera. I got this camera. This camera has great quality. It has great quality that you see in like videos, like really high cameras. If you didn't have this microphone right here, um, you would still hear me. It just wouldn't be as great. So if you put the microphone in, people can hear you better. When I first got my camera, I was trying to learn how to film on it. I wanted to be the cameraman because I like it so much. You can as much or as little as you want, that's fine. Jacob and I went from having a friction between us to being very close. <laughs> or else I would explode. I'll be like, <laughs> you're doing a great job. When you get of it, okay, that's all right. We we'll just, we'll just keep rolling. Bruce is my husband, he's my partner, and he's been in the film and television industry for 30 years now. Part of what attracted me to wanting to do this job was I knew that I brought a certain set of skills besides just having autism. I brought actual film and production skills and I knew that I could lean on my, on my partner to help with that. He became a real mentor to Jacob, yet Jacob just soaked him up like a sponge. Um, he had so many questions. And, and uh, Bruce loved being able to teach. We're gonna take our time. And Bruce, he was a cameraman, and he did some camera work, like some movies and stuff, that I didn't even know about. It was good to work with Bruce because usually I film on my own, so filming with someone else is a little bit different. Sometimes it's good to have two cameras just in case. It gives you different options, so if he's up high and I'm down low, you look at the scenes which one you like the best, and we he would pick and I would pick which scene what, that we liked the best, and then we would pick which one it was. He was helpful, but he didn't give me too much stuff that I needed to work on. Jacob and the rest of the video project members decide to meet for one last time at the Autism Nova Scotia office for an advanced screening and to celebrate and reflect on their filmmaking success. This group has just developed this synergy between them. They are there to make this movie, right? And it's very important to them to make this movie. And so they still find ways to set their differences apart. I think that's part of what makes them special is that they recognize there's some personality differences, but they're like, well, we're here to make the movie, so we're gonna just do that anyway. As Video Project wraps up another year of production, the attention turns to the premiere. Originally, we were gonna be showing in a theater, but everything changes. We had so many people watch it on the virtual premiere that night and people were like oh wow and there were so many likes and thumbs up and everyone was commenting saying terrific job way to go i even received phone calls from people way out of town and they said good job nick and you had a wonderful team who did a great job on the film and i said thank you i wouldn't have been able to do it without them <laughs> 
I am truly grateful for what I've learned all this time for the past almost five years now. Three films, like almost 10, 15, 20 people or more. It's been fun. When you're making a film, it's an escapism. Everyone has their own style and what they want to put out there. Like if they want to do a little bit of comedy, a little bit of drama, adventure, maybe a bit of suave and debonair or something like that. <laughs> they have their own personality, their own style of what they want to bring out there. Your laser pointer. It's magic, movie magic. If you're autistic and you're interested and you're thinking that you'd maybe like to come to Video Project but you're not quite sure, um, come. Because you're going to find a group of people that are open and accepting. Um, you're going to find a group of people that will help you figure out what your strengths are and will support you through the things that you maybe don't feel that you're strong in. You will have fun. You will get to talk about movies. You will find yourself challenged. But the most important thing is that you will find yourself with members of your community, which is something that autistic people don't get to experience a lot. We don't tend to get to hang out with our own neurological peers. And so come and see what it's like to hang out with uh, people who have kind of walked through life and, and, and experienced life like you do, and make a movie and have a lot of fun. I think Video Project is the best thing that's ever happened to me. It gave me a new way of expressing my talents. And I can show the world, and not just here in Nova Scotia, but everywhere, that I can do something that I can reach to people. If you want to join Video Project, I think you should do it. I think you should pursue what you want to pursue, so to help build your life more clearly. And I want to thank them for it, for changing my life forever. Producer Mike Zakchevsky. Directors Mike Zakchevsky, Brad Rivers. Writer Max Zakchevsky. Narrator Jim Van Horn. Interviewer Mike Zakchevsky. Director of Photography Brad Rivers. Editor, Mike Zakchevsky. Integrated Describe Video Specialist, Ron Rickford. Special thanks, Autism Nova Scotia, Tricia George Zwicker, Bruce Zwicker. Graphics, Andrew Antonello. Content Development Specialist, Ryan Delahunty. Coordinating Producer, Jennifer Johnson. Consulting Producer, Colette Vosberg. Director Production, Karen I. Director Programming, Brian Perdue. VP Content Development and Programming, John Melville. President and CEO, David Arrington. Produced with the participation of Canada Media Fund. Copyright 2021, Accessible Media, Inc.